In this video, we're going to talk about a concept called matching. And what matching is, is how a virtual service takes an incoming request, parses the data, and looks through the virtual service to find the appropriate recorded response. To demonstrate this, we're going to look through two transaction bundles and two virtual services created from these transaction bundles. These virtual services were created through the recording process, so if you haven't watched the video on how to create a virtual service by recording, before you go any further, it's helpful to go back and watch that video and then come back to this one because the process that we're going to use to demonstrate the matching concepts ties directly into the recording process and it helps you understand how we wound up with the different virtual service scenarios that we have. So going forward in this video from here, I'm going to assume that you have seen the recording video and talk to it as if you understand those concepts. So to get started, we're going to use the Forward Cars application to go through and see how our virtual service is actually responding to requests coming from the Cars application. And we're going to look through two transaction bundles and two virtual services created from those transaction bundles. So here we can see we have the two transaction bundles, Forward Cars, Inventory 1 Car, and 3 Cars. And the difference between the two is both of these transaction bundles use the recording feature to gather the transactions. But the one car transaction bundle only has a request for a single car. The three cars has requests for three different cars. So the virtual service creation process is going to handle these two different transaction bundles differently. So we're going to examine that and we're also going to look at how the virtual services created from these transaction bundles respond differently. So to jump right in, let's go straight to the virtual services themselves. Here we have the one car virtual service, and it's running on port 8001. So keep this port in mind. We'll use the 8001, the one at the end, to represent the one car. And then we have the three car virtual service here, which is running on port 8003. So first, we're going to start both of these virtual services. So we'll click on Run for the one car, and we'll click on Run for the second car, and we can have both virtual services running at the same time. And we can see the little green icon here that is representing that these virtual services are in fact running. And then all we'll have to do is change the target application forward cars to point to the different virtual services to see the different experiences very quickly. So in this first virtual service, we can see that this one has recorded the first Audi in the list at forward cars. And the VIN number ends in 9014. And in the three car virtual service, you can see we, create, we recorded the first three cars in the forward cars search page. And we have the 9014 VIN, the 6900 VIN, and the 8771 VIN numbers. So let's jump over to forward cars and make sense of all this. So if we get into forward cars, we can go over to search and we can change the port number here to 8001. And this is going to set the web layer to send requests to the virtual service running on 8001 instead of the ESB. So go back to home, search. And now we are communicating with the one car virtual service. So if I click on view details here for the Audi, we can see that we're getting a response back that matches the Audi. And we have the 9014 VIN number showing. So we're getting the correct data back for this car. But if we click on the Acura, we're getting a blank page. In fact, if we click on any car but the first Audi, we're going to get a blank page instead of data populating the different fields. Now let's switch this over to the virtual service running with three recorded cars. So we'll change the port number to 8003, set the ESB, and come back to the search page. And now when we click on the Audi, we're getting the correct details. We've got the 9014 VIN. We click on the first Acura, we're getting an Acura showing up, and we're getting the VIN with 6900. And we click on the next Acura, and we're getting the VIN with 8771. Now if we scroll down to the BMW here, and we click on View Details, notice that we're getting the Audi, but we're getting a different VIN number. We're actually getting 
uh, not the same VIN number, the 9014, that the Audi was. So let's go ahead and stop here and go back over to our virtual services and take a look at what's happening behind the scene. Okay, so we're back in the virtual service window and we can see we're looking at the one car virtual service and we can see the transactions that pass through the virtual service while we were interacting with it with forward cars. So this is the inspector view here and it allows you to look at each transaction and figure out what happened uh, essentially for debugging. So if you have some issues you can go through and look and see what happened and why you were getting a different response than you're expecting. So if we look through the list of transactions here we can see that we have a URI here our forward cars application is using REST and we have a URI that is calling the car data from the database and it's sending the VIN number in the URI as a way for the database to find the appropriate car and send the appropriate response back. So by selecting this URI or this transaction that took place in the virtual service we can go ahead and examine what exactly happened behind the scenes by jumping over to the matched transaction view and we'll click on the response and we can see that it found a response matching this VIN number and it sent back the response with the Audi. But if we click on a different URI, we can see here that instead it sent a 404 not found. So this is the response that is sent when there is an unknown request. And it's a little long here to scroll through, but basically this response is saying, hey, we couldn't find a match for requests, so we're going to send back a 404. This request is not found. So below the list of transactions here, there's another tab, Service Image Editor. So this is the data that's in the virtual service file itself that is going to be used to process the request and send a response back. If you notice, we have the URI here with a specific VIN number in it. So what's going to happen is when a request comes in, it's going to go through all these different transactions and try and match things up, such as inventory car make inventory car. So as we sent the request in to get the information on the Audi, it went through this list and when it hit inventory car inventory, said, oh, we have a match. It then looked at the VIN number and said, yeah, we have an exact match for this VIN number. Go ahead and send back this response. And if we scroll way over here, we can see the VIN number for the Audi. So it went through this list, arrived at this URI, it matched the URI in the request and said, let's go ahead and send this response back. However, when it went through this whole list and it did not find an exact match for any of the other VIN numbers, it sent back the default request not found response. So now let's look at our virtual service that had three cars recorded in it. And if you notice, we have a long list of transactions here. We can go ahead and pull this up to see what happened or to see more of them a little bit easier. So if you notice, this list looks a little bit different. You can see we have the URI with the car inventory, but instead of a specific VIN number, it says URL param zero. So if we click on this transaction, we now see over here in the incoming transactions panel, the request and an argument is URL param zero. The value is the VIN number for the Audi. And we can see that it matched this argument here with the Audi. So it sent back the response for the Audi. So we see the 9014. If we go up a little bit further here, on the next one we can see same thing. This one has the 8771. And if we look over here, it matched an exact one. And so it sent back the information for the Acura. And if we go up a little further, actually let's jump back down here. I missed one. This is the second car, same thing. We have a value here of a VIN number, the 6900, and it sent back the response for that Acura as well. So those three transactions all got the exact response that was recorded during the recording process because those three VIN numbers were recorded in the virtual service image file. And we're going to look at that in a minute. I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but I'm just telling you that that's the reason why that happened. So. Uh, now let's go up to the next transaction, which is the BMW. So if you notice, we have this VIN number here, the 8774 came in. Instead of sending back the BMW, it sent back the Audi response, but it did send back the correct VIN number. 
So at this point, let's quickly recap to make sure that we understand what's happening prior to going into looking at exactly how this all happened. So we had three requests come in that had VIN numbers, which we can see up here in the description of the virtual service. These are the three VIN numbers that were actually captured in this virtual service. And the virtual service sent back the exact responses or the specific responses to those cars. Then we had a fourth car come in and instead of sending back the exact response for it, it sent back the response from the first car recorded, the Audi, and then it sent back the actual VIN number with the response for the Audi. So now let's jump over into the service image editor for this file and take a look at why this is. So in our service image editor file, we can look at the data that is stored in the virtual service. And this is where we could manipulate the data. Now, right now I have the virtual service running still. You would want to stop it first before you start uh, working on the data and then restart it so that the data gets propagated appropriately. But let's just jump in here and look at the transactions that were captured in the virtual service. And notice we have the inventory, car inventory, URL param zero transaction. If we open this up, notice it says default by the first transaction. This means that this transaction right here is going to be labeled as the default or sometimes called the meta transaction. And what it is is this transaction is the one that is going to be used by default if a VIN number is not matched. So if we look at this URL param zero, what this is saying is if a URI comes in with any VIN number in it, so we can see here that it has arguments for the request. The argument is URL param zero, the operator is anything, and the value is the VIN number from the first Audi. Basically what it's saying is if anything comes through with a VIN, any VIN at all, it's matching this transaction right here. However, let's look at the information below. What it's saying is before we send back this response here in the body for the Audi, let's take a look at these other specific transactions before we send back the default response. So if we click on the next one, now we can see we have the VIN for the Audi, but the operator is equals. So this means it has to match exactly. And if it does, if the VIN matches this exactly, it's going to send this response, which is the Audi. And in the next one, we have the 6900 VIN. If it matches this exactly, we're going to send it back for the first Acura. And then on the third one, if it matches the 8771 exactly, it's going to send back the response for the second Acura. However, for example, the BMW that we chose, if it doesn't match any of these three specifics, then it's going to come back up to the default transaction here, and it's going to send the response for the Audi. So the next question you're probably having is, well, why did it send the Audi response to the BMW, but actually send the correct VIN number back? And the reason for that is, is in the process of creating the virtual service as it parses the data, it's going to look through all the transactions and it's going to say, okay, in the request, is there a piece of data that is exactly the same as it is in the response? And so in the request coming through the URI was this VIN number. And in the response was also this VIN number. So we can see here it generates a little string that's called a magic string. And from this point forward, any request that comes in, it's going to make sure that the request, the VIN number in, that's in the request is the same when it gets sent back in the response. So the BMW came through, it hit this default transaction, but instead of sending back the Audi's VIN number, it used this magic string right here to actually copy the VIN number from the request and paste it into the response. So that always matches coming back. So that is how magic strings work and it's automatically created or magic strings are automatically created when the virtual service is created from the transaction bundle. So from here, another question you might be thinking is why is it that the virtual service with three cars has this parameterized information, but the virtual service with one car actually has the hard coded VIN number in it. And the reason for that is, is in the transaction bundle itself, you can see that we recorded just one transaction here with the VIN number. And in the forward cars, three cars 
We can see that there's three URIs here that have VIN numbers in them. When the virtual service is processed, much like the magic strings, it looks through, and if it sees duplicate transactions like this, where the URI is the same and then there's a VIN number, and that gave the tool enough data so that when this bundle was processed, it deduced that this would be a good transaction to create a parameterized URL that would let any VIN number come in and also create a magic string for that. So by giving the virtual service three pieces of data, that was enough for it to analyze and then to automatically create that dynamic transaction in the virtual service. However, in the one car transaction bundle, there's only one transaction. So there wasn't enough data for the virtual service creation process to make a decision as to whether or not to make that dynamic and allow for the default response to go back instead of the unknown request response. So to recap this, the way the matching process works is when a request comes in, it's going to run through the list of transactions and look for matches. And in this case, it's going to be looking for if a URI comes in with inventory car inventory, it's going to look for a match there. If it finds a match, it will then go down through the specific transactions looking for a specific match. And if it doesn't find a specific match, it's going to come back up to the default transaction and send the default response instead. So understanding how matching works and how the transaction bundle data is parsed to create dynamic responses is really helpful when it comes time to creating your virtual services and for troubleshooting down the road if you're not seeing the responses that you're looking for.